Hello there. One of the most important things in all of science is the idea of energy and its conservation. In other words, how one form or type of energy becomes another type. So we will begin with the very basic conservation of energy, uh, of mechanical energy that is, and that's given as follows. That the initial kinetic energy plus the initial potential energy is the uh, final kinetic energy plus the final potential energy. Now, sometimes this can be reduced, right? So for example, what if we start from rest? Well, that means uh, if we start from rest, that means our velocity is zero to begin with, and so our kinetic energy will be zero. And then this will just become PE initial is equal to KE final plus PE final. MV initial squared plus MGY initial plus MGY final. Notice that the mass is the same. We're assuming that this object going down the hill would keep the same mass. Let's go ahead and draw a hill. It's not going to be a perfect hill at all. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a boulder. And just for dramatic effect, oh, I'm going to make this boulder have spikes. And it's catching on fire. And it's made of kryptonite. You get the idea. It's a boulder of death. Okay, so let's look at a few key points here. So here's the initial at the top. Let's look at the halfway point. And then we'll look at the final right here. We're going to assume that this, at the, when it hits the ground, it's going to be zero. So uh, y would equal zero at the ground. Okay, which means that we have a height, uh, delta y or an h, if you will. Okay, now this is very important because I drew this hill in such a way that it is not linear, it's not straight, it doesn't make sense, but it doesn't matter because when it comes to kinetic and potential energy, the only thing that matters as far as gravitational potential energy is the height, that delta y. Okay. Now, for our, for our boulder of death, uh, this has a maximum height. So our potential energy will be max. Our kinetic energy will be zero because this thing is at rest. Upon us releasing it, then that potential energy be, begins to transfer and to become kinetic energy. Okay. Now let's go to the other extreme. When it hits the ground, right immediately before it hits the ground, the kinetic energy will be a max because its velocity is the greatest at that point. And at this point, of course, the height is zero. So recall that if it's m times g times uh, y, and if y is zero, the potential energy becomes zero. Now, a beautiful thing happens halfway along the, uh, the road. Potential energy and kinetic energy end up being equal to each other at the halfway point. And what happens is, on the way down, they switch off. Great job, everybody. Here's a quick demonstration. Notice this skater, that as I go ahead and move the skater, up and down, how the, it affects the potential energy. Moving the skater left and right does not because delta x does not affect the potential energy, only the delta y. As I go ahead and increase this skater's um, displacement from the ground, vertical displacement, you'll notice that it increases the total mechanical energy and therefore the potential energy. The kinetic energy is zero right now because the skater is at rest. As soon as I allow the skater to go ahead and begin to do its velocity. You're welcome. And allow gravity to work on it. You'll notice most impressive how the kinetic and potential energies are switching off. Take note of when the kinetic energy is maximum. You also notice that when the kinetic energy is maximum, the speed is also at its maximum. You notice the potential energy is at maximum when kinetic energy is zero. And I would suggest to you that this being a displacement, a vertical displacement of six that at three, and at three, at these two points, you should have that kinetic energy is equal to potential energy. So take a look at that bar graph. I don't care. Could you say that again, again, please? And you'll note how essentially they've switched off nicely. Hello there. Okay. And there is a continual switching back and forth of energies. No energy is lost, and this is why it's called conservation of energy. Problem three, roller coaster. So consider roller coaster. Notice again that e even though it, there's bumps in this ride, 
that it doesn't matter. All that really matters at the end are going to be these delta y's. What is a block's potential energy and kinetic energy at point A? Well, this hasn't been released yet. It's, it's released from rest. So if it's at rest, that means that the kinetic energy at up here at point A must be zero. Okay, it must be zero because it's at rest. The velocity is zero. However, the potential energy will be max. Let's go ahead and calculate that. Potential energy at A is going to be three kilograms times 9.8 meter per second squared times five meters. Turn that into calculator, it gives you 147 joules. Consider potential energy almost like a battery, right? Uh, uh, your cell phones have a battery and, it's, and it can be charged 100%. If it's only charged 30%, you're only allowed to use 30% of the energy, uh, you know, ener of your battery that's available. So depending on how much energy is stored is how much energy you get to use, okay? Uh, in this case, for this roller coaster problem, we have 147 joules total available to us. But as this block descends down the roller coaster, you will note that just like a skater, the potential energies and the kinetic energies will switch off. But this will remain our total possible energy. This will be very helpful for part B and C. Part B, oh my, I'm afraid I didn't leave enough space for part B. What is the velocity? Well, first, in a similar manner, if you were to take a second and find the potential energy at point B, you will find that the potential energy at point B is 94.08 joules. But the kinetic energy at point B is going to be the leftovers of the total energy because they're switching off. At every point in this roller coaster, A, B, and C, and everything in between, the total energy is equal to 147 joules. So if at point B, I've, I'm, I'm, I have 94.08 joules of potential energy left, that means that the rest of it became kinetic energy. And so if I subtract 94.08 from 147, I get 52.92 joules of kinetic energy at point B. But problem becomes, what is the velocity at point B? So the reason why I look for kinetic energy at point B is because now I can use the definition of kinetic energy, right? Kinetic energy is one half m v squared. So we've shown earlier that if we rearrange things, that the velocity would be the square root of two times kinetic energy over mass. Plugging in the appropriate numbers for that. We get, rounding up, 5.94 meters per second. This problem was going to be near impossible without conservation of energy. Understanding how the potential energy and the kinetic energy interplay with each other, understanding how much total you had to begin with, how that total remains the same throughout the roller coaster, and how those energies have switched off, how one transfers and becomes another one, okay? Part C, you should try out part C. This one is similar to part B without the velocity. What is a block's kinetic energy at point C? So go ahead and pause me. Try it out. Great job, everybody. So the potential energy at point C ends up being 58.8 .8 joules. In this case, you would use a 2 meter a delta Y. And recalling that the total energy for this problem was 147 joules, right? That was found from point part A at the beginning. Subtracting the potential energy left, right? This is the potential energy left at this point because the rest of it became kinetic energy. An object 
maintains its mass constant. It's thrown down from a high building with a non-zero initial velocity. In order to calculate the final velocity of the object upon hitting the ground, what general setup would you use? So I want you to consider for a moment in your summary, I'm going to just help you set it up. So you have PE initial plus KE initial is equal to PE final plus KE final. In other words, what can you cancel out? What must you keep in this in this setup? Take a moment to think about that. For problem four, we have the, uh, the idea of what we call a pendulum, and a pendulum is a great example of conservation of energy. Um, so we have four points, one, two, three, and four, and the question becomes between which adjacent pairs, in other words, between which two next to each other pairs, right, adjacent uh next to each other, neighboring pairs of positions, is the change in kinetic energy the greatest? Now, hear me out. The change in kinetic energy is the greatest when the change in potential energy is greatest. And that's because they trade off like we've showed you. The change in potential energy is greatest when the change in the vertical displacement is the greatest, right? So, uh, if we want the biggest change in kinetic energy, well, that depends on the change, the greatest change of potential energy. But the change of potential energy is going to be mg times delta y. So whatever, wh whichever two points have the greatest change in delta y means that it'll be the one that has the greatest change in its potential energy and therefore the greatest change in its kinetic energy. To be able to figure that out, it can be as simple as just geometry. So if I were to go ahead and draw, for example, if I were to draw triangles between each of the two adjacent pairs, you'll notice that between 3 and 4, this delta y is the smallest. And you'll notice that between 1 and 2, this delta y is the greatest. So it will be between points 1 and 2 that the change of kinetic energy is the greatest. That's all there is to it.